first pigskin was somewhat different from the ones we see today, but it was used the same way at the Stone Bowl in the original skin game. A touchdown sparks the cheering section. My, my, the game is getting out of hand. Looks as though the football is winning. Here's a ball game that never makes the sports pages. These guys aren't saving string. Burlap balls are tied with twine, then doused in oil. As soon as it gets dark, the boys light up the oil-soaked wads and begin playing great balls of fire. To qualify for this competition, a man has to be a real hothead. Carefree college cut-ups. Boy meets ball, ball bounces boy. In this contest, everybody is on the ball. Or you might say the ball is on everybody. This game was invented to keep shirt makers happy. The idea is to push that giant ball across the other fellow's goal line without getting trampled to death. The losers go down to the sea for a ducking. Back on terra firma once again, we find the members of the Sunday Drivers Association playing a little auto polo. As you can see, the ball is incidental. Confusion is the key word. Say, there's that guy who blows his horn when the light changes. Take that. With sirens wailing, the fire engines rumble out of the firehouse, bound for action. On the scene, hoses are coupled and water hisses into the air. At a ball. It's a diversion called hose ball, and the firemen love it. This is one sport where the spectators don't fight for a front row seat. You know the old saying, you're all wet? It began here. Football practice on the beach. Scrimmaging in the sand gives the players lots of grit. And what's more, they're ready to play in any kind of weather, including flood conditions. But when it comes to their aerial attack, they're really off the ground. Wait till you see them in action. And here they are. After that session in the Florida sunshine, they're raring to go. Looks as though springboard practice really pays off. Speaking of football, did you know that there are seven different kinds of football? There's American, Australian, Canadian, Gaelic, rugby, soccer, and six-man football, each with different rules. One game at a time, please. Welcome to the international rugby match in Europe. Pomp and ceremony attend the entrance of the players. In fact, the whole affair is attended by a crowd of well-behaved fans. Gentle chivalry marks the introduction. And then comes the kickoff. Brother, this is legalized murder. No forward passes allowed and no substitutions, just vigorous, healthy fun. Oops, sorry old chap, didn't see you standing there. After every game, there's only one question in the mind of every player. Where's that liniment bottle? Yes, rugby is rugged. This charming pastime is known as soccer, and it's played all over the world. One thing about this game, a man can really use his head, one way or another. If you have bones of iron, a head that is solid concrete, and you never get winded, then soccer is for you. Of course, you'll have to abide by the rules, and remember, no hands allowed. You'll make a score over my dead body, buddy. Oh, well. If there was ever a game of footsie, this is it. Those underpins of his have a college education. In case you're wondering what he's doing, he's dribbling the ball down toward the goal, just like in basketball. Try it sometime. It'll reduce your waistline in a hurry.
Say, here's a switch. You take an outdoor game like soccer, bring it indoors, and what have you got? That's right, indoor soccer. The object, of course, is to put this exciting ball game in direct competition with basketball, even if we do lose a few players this way. And while we're on the subject of basketball, let's begin with the youngest exponents of the sport, boys. As you can see, basketball fever gets them at an early age. Catching a guard off guard takes talent, and these fledglings have plenty to spare. It's not so far from diapers to basketball shorts. By the time basketballers reach manhood, their tricky treatment with the ball would make a magician turn green with envy. When the renowned Harlem Globetrotters take the court, it's a treat. This is what they mean when they say the hand is quicker than the eye. Man, that basketball will bear watching. Under expert control, it becomes a thing alive. seen anything yet. Once the contest begins, the Globetrotters turn this game into a science. All this excitement over who's doing what, where. But that's basketball. Build up a leading score, then freeze the ball if you can. Exhausting, isn't it? As the players tire, that basket seems to be getting smaller and smaller, and the ball keeps getting heavier and heavier. Maybe that's not a basketball at all. It feels more like a medicine ball. It's a great game. Next, we come to water polo, although sometimes we wonder why, because this is one of the toughest games in the book. Maybe the players don't get water on the knee in this ball game, but you can hold your opponent underwater till he drowns, unless he turns loose the ball. Without gills, a guy can't breathe down there. And besides, I'd rather breathe than score any day. If we don't score soon, we'll all be waterlogged. Let me out of here. The ladies, too, besport themselves in mermaid fashion with a go at underwater basketball. It's a nice, clean sport and mighty pleasing to the eye. Besides, it gives us a chance to make movies of the girls. Even underwater, the referee has the last word. Wait, somebody is turning blue. So the referee signals, and it's away with the ball. <laughs> 